Um, <clears throat> we will be recording this session. Uh, my name is Rudy Potenzone uh, from the Transmart Foundation. I'd like to welcome you to our first uh, new user training class for 2016. Um, today our trainer will be Natal Natalie, Natalia Bukroff from Thomson Reuters. Um, the, uh, the training uh, is going to be uh, hosted, the, the, the platform, the Transmart platform is hosted by BT Communications uh, and made available. Um, to us. Uh, as I said, the session will be recorded and the recording will be available at the training website. This year our training is a little different. Um, we are providing uh, a number of different classes throughout the year. Uh, we will have a class every month, uh, the last Monday of the month. And yeah, you can see that the topics are going to not only include uh, Transmart for Beginners, uh, but also classes on loading data into Transmart, uh, exploring advanced workflows, uh, looking at the RESTful APIs and the R interface, uh, as well as a, a, a topic, spe special topic on uh, ETL tutorial using the, the TM data loader tool. Um, training is provided uh, alternating with different companies uh, by uh, Rancho Biosciences, Thomson Reuters, and The Hive, uh, and all of these are supported by um, British Telecom, the BTGS, on, on their platform. Uh, there is a schedule posted on the website that you can see. Obviously, you've been to the website to register for this class, uh, and uh, these are the different day, the, the months that we're offering each of these classes. Uh, this this may change slightly uh, during the year, but um, these are the, the classes that will be offered, and uh, hopefully, you'll be able to uh, participate uh, and tell your colleagues about them. We like to start uh, each time with a couple of questions um, for you. And um, we have um, uh, a poll that asks you a question that should appear on your screen now. Uh, the first one is, uh, have you used the Transmart platform before? And so if you would, um, please click one of the boxes. <clears throat> this gives us an idea of uh, how many of you have seen the platform before, had any, any contact. And... Um, Pretty similar to, to last year, it's about 50-50, half of you have and half of you have not. Uh, and so that's great, thank you for that. And my second question is how you use the platform. Uh, here we're interested to know if you're actually a researcher who will use it. Are you supporting people within your company? Uh, are you doing academic research or training, or are you at a vendor site? <clears throat> and the results are about half, half of you are, are supporting other users, uh, and uh, a couple of you are doing research, uh, or either in, in industry or academics, and a couple from vendors. So that's great. Uh, thank you again for that. Uh, and so um, we will now go right into the training. And uh, I'm very pleased to uh, introduce Natalia, who's going to take us from here and um, present the training class. Uh, I will be the moderator. I'll stay online. Uh, if you have questions, we're using the Citrix GoToMeeting. Uh, you have three ways that you can contact us during this. Everyone is on mute. Um, but uh, you can raise your hand, and I will be watching to see if you have a, if people raise your hand. You can enter questions in the question window in the control panel, or you can uh, use the chat window. And so I will monitor all of these throughout, and uh, at, at appropriate times we will break and uh, ask for questions. And, of course, there will be a question and answer period at the end. Uh, as, uh, this is also being recorded, uh, and the slide deck that we use will be posted uh, these will all be available um, hopefully later today or else tomorrow. So uh, with that, let me introduce Natalia. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Um, and I'll change you to the presenter. There you go. That didn't pop up in the 
Juan de Ramsey. Do you see it? Okay. Yeah, great. Yep, we see it. All right, looks good. Okay, I don't want to close this. Okay, I'll just move it to the bottom. Do you see my complete screen or? No, it looks good. I, it looks, I see the whole screen. It's, okay. it's a full, full slide. Yep. So I have um, an overview of the platform first, and then we go into uh, the instances, and we will do the live demo. Uh, so, as uh, Rudy has mentioned, Transmart is an open source community driven knowledge management platform. Originally, it was developed by Johnson & Johnson and Recombinant in 2009, and in 2012, it has been released as an open source platform, and uh, Transmart Foundation was uh, created. And and there were a few releases under the leadership of Transmart Foundation 1.1 and 1.2. Transmart is a collaborative development, and there are more than 100 computer scientists and physician scientists who are developing Transmart, adding new features. Um, it, it is a single integrated analytical and data sharing platform for clinical and translational research. Uh, initially, Transmart was based on the I2B2, and uh, those that who are familiar with I2B2, you may know that in this uh, platform we can also analyze clinical data. Uh, the great advantage of Transmart is that you can load different type of data, um, multiple biomarker data, and the list keeps growing. So uh, Transmart right now supports clinical gene expression, RNA-seq, microRNA, qPCR, and seq data, uh, small genomic variant, VCF, um, and GLAS data as well, array CGH, proteomics, and metabolomics data. Uh, and platform so far, it has been downloaded by more than 150 academic and industrial uh, and private research organizations. So as many of you know that tra translational research data is big data. You have high dimensional data, data generated using different type of arrays. You have uh, phenom data, you have clinical phenotype, molecular phenotype, and all of this data can be loaded into Transmart and interrogated. So having all of the data aggregated uh, from preclinical to in vitro, in vivo assay to late clinical data allows to test hypotheses, do the preclinical data analysis, design clinical trials, um, analyze the efficacy endpoints, analyze drug efficacy. So this is a very great uh, platform for biomarker research and translational research. Um, uh, this is the list of companies uh, that have been contributing to 1.2. Um, Sanofi has been a great contributor uh, and designed a number of features, and all of the other companies have also contributed. Uh, Pfizer has been working on GVAS and um, have contributed uh, GVAS loading scripts. So on this slide, I have... Um, all the companies that are currently members of uh, Transmart Foundation, and, and the list keeps growing. Uh, so this is uh, all I have for introduction. Oh, except for this slide here. So uh, the, the publicly available site on Transmart has this um, URL. You can log in using password guest uh, account guest and password transfer 2015. I'm not sure if 
Transform 2016 will work this year. But Transform 2015 really works. I have tested it before. And uh, the data set that we will be looking at today, they are available on this uh, training and exploratory instance. And uh, these data sets can also be downloaded and loaded on your instance uh, from Transmart Foundation. They are pre-curated and they are available for loading. Okay, um, any questions? Okay, so as I have mentioned, uh, this is a Transmart Foundation instance, public instance, that anyone can log in and um, explore and um, kind of practice analyzing data in Transmart. Uh, I'm going to use this instance, but I, I, I will also would like to use um, Thomson Reuters uh, demo instance as well. Uh, on this instance, I have the same data sets loaded. So um, the first topic on our training is the Transmart, um, uh, Transmart interfaces. So Transmart has two main interfaces. It's a browse interface and analyze interface. When you log in into Transmart, uh, first you will see the browse interface. And on the browse interface, you have the program explorer on your left. And then you have um, the different tabs. Uh, analyze, sample explorer, gen signature, GVAS, upload data, administrate, administrative tab. It's only available if you log in as an administrator and utilities. On utilities, you can log out and contact for help. Analyze, we will um, um, discuss later. So what, what is the browse interface? So in the browse interface, in the program explorer, if you are an administrator, you can create programs. So and in these programs, you can uh, load the metadata for the studies that you are loading into Transmart. So here in the program explorer, I have program autoimmune diseases. And in the autoimmune diseases, I have several diseases, lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. The rheumatoid arthritis GSE 2690 is the one data set that we are going to take a look. Okay, if you open this data set, um, you can read the information that was entered with this data set into the uh, Program Explorer. And you can add new assay, a new analysis, a new folder to add additional information. If you look at this um, other arthritis data set, this one, here you can see there are a um, number of other folders that were created to add other data and other annotation to this data set. So the browse interface is a browse in search. In addition to exploring your data set that you have loaded, you can also search for your data set. And this is a very important feature because when you have a lot of data in your um, Transmart, it might be hard to find the exact type of data sets that you want to analyze. So here you have several options for searching. On the top here, you have um, uh, the window to input your uh, search term. And you can actually search either a free text or you can uh, search in the some of the other fields. You can search diseases. You can search genes. Let's search the free text. So what I want to find is I'm looking for any studies that were using infliximab at the therapeutics. So here I will just um, infliximab. And, um, 
I have misspelled it. Okay, so um, it will search on a part of the word. You don't really have to type the whole word. And here you can see that we have two studies uh, that were using Infliximab. Here is the one, uh, GC2690, that I have mentioned. We are going to look in some details. And there is another study here, uh, another RA study that have also used Infliximab. And it's somewhere in the um, text somewhere. Uh, you can also use um, and o uh, to make a, a more precise search. So we can um, look at the study and we can try to just find this study. So this is um, the Infliximab study. And um, you know, they're mentioning 42 patients. Um, both of them have 42. So that, oh, and, okay. So, and then all toggles. So if we combine infliximab and 42, we are only uh, retrieving one study. And because this study has the infliximab as in treatment and the 42 patient were analyzed with, with microarrays for training studies, and then 26 were analyzed for prospective studies. Okay. In addition to um, this um, search field, there are also filters. In these filters, you see several different type of filters. Under each type of filter, you have specific filters. Under the program therapeutic domain, you can see different therapeutic domains that you can select to identify the studies that you're interested in analyzing. And the therapeutic domain, let's see what we have in cancer and other neoplasms. So when you select cancer and other neoplasms, um, you get in Program Explorer Oncology Program. And under this Oncology Program, there are studies that have been um, entered and tagged with um, neoplasms. So the pathology here is breast neoplasms. So the study itself, the program itself is oncology, and the oncology is uh, therapeutic domain, cancer, and other neoplasms. So when you um, load the data into the browse interface, some of the fields are free text, like this description here, and some of the fields are uh, controlled. And the controlled ones, when you um, load the study, they will have a star. So, and then you will have a drop-down menu to select different terms. So these control fields are what are the used, used for filtering in this window here and in the filters. Uh, the free text is just a free text search. Anything that has been loaded as a free text uh, can be found with a free text search. Okay. Um, Let's go back to this data set here that we have identified and look at the um, metadata that is available that has been entered. First of all, you have a link here to this study in GEO. So you can go into the GEO and uh, look, look up more information about the study. Then you also have PubMed ID that will take you into the PubMed and you can download the paper. Okay, in addition it has some textual information. 
whether the study is published, what kind of biomarkers, um, what what study phase it is. Once you identify the study that you want to um, analyze, you can go directly into the analyze view from here. You can click on the analyze view, and this is a study that you found in the browser and you would like to explore. So I um, actually want to um, look at all of the studies. Not just that one. So, are there any questions in the browse interface? We did have one question um, from Joel. Uh, he asks, can you search on uh, variable names in the master tree, in the Analyze tab, or only on their mm -hmm. description? No, you can search in the Analyze tree as well. We just went to the Analyze tree. So if you have a variable name in your tree, you can also search on it. We'll give it a try. Here, this is the use act activity score, DAF 28, and uh, you have variables that include DAF 28, and uh, they are here in bold once you do the search. So the search works in browse interface, and it will also work in the um, analyze interface. Um, for the folder name, this will be your um, variable name, folder and uh, nodes names. We'll be searched here. Um, so, that uh, answer the questions? Or oh, um, it's not clear? Yes, that's yes, that's good. Thank you. Okay. That's the only question so far. Okay, so uh, analyze interface. So in the analyze interface, you can also see a navigate terms panel, and then you have the subset selection panel, and you have to see these different tabs that we're going to look into the steps later when we are going through this data. So in the navigate panel, you have um, top level folders like public data, test data, in this case, it could be private data, so you can create um, folders based on the type of data you want to load uh, or on the disease domains, so it's flexible. Here I'm opening the public studies folder, and you can see there are a number of studies that have been loaded, and um, they have a number of breast cancer here, um, and there are rheumatoid arthritis and some of the other data sets. So the data set that we are going to look at this uh, rheumatoid arthritis, GC2690. And you can also find um, this data sets in the uh, public um, instance as well. So this data set has then folders, biomarker data, clinical data, samples and time points, treatment groups, and subjects. This is a pretty standard way of loading data, uh, splitting them between folders like that. And uh, some uh, studies are loaded using different structure, and it really depends on the study and on the um, institution, but um, this is a recommended um, uh, structure for the transplant tree. So in the biomarker data, then you can see the platform name and then blood, the blood is the tissue. So the biomarker data for this data set, it's uh, an array. Uh, it's mRNA array. So allergen is an array that was used. Blood is a tissue that was used for the study. And this uh, DNA kind of um, picture here 
Um, and this is an indication that this is a high dimensional array type data, data type. So there are three data types in Transmart. This is high dimensional. And then we have categorical and numerical. So the ABC indicates that this is categorical data type. Okay, the subject and demographic. Age is one, two, three. This is numerical data type. So um, biomarker data, clinical data, samples and time points and subjects. So under clinical data, um, you can find the data that were generated in the course of um, clinical trial, for example, or any other clinical data for any observational studies. Um, the medical history is typically loaded under subject medical history. Here, you can find information on the previous medication that was used for the subjects, what was primary diagnosis, and any other medical history that has been collected uh, before uh, the trial or before uh, the study. So um, from this tree now, we can select uh, subsets and explore our data. So let's um, select two subsets to compare. So in a clinical data, under clinical data, we have clinical response. There are several different clinical response that have been recorded. So there is uh, CRP, DAS28 CRP, DAS28 ESR. Uh, this is different response for rheumatoid arthritis based on the C-reactive proteins, based on the erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Um, and then there is um, some other uh, ways of uh, calculating the same type of response. Um, let's select one of the responses, the three variable response based on the erythrocyte sedimentation rate and compare patients that had good response and that had no response. So in order to do it, uh, all, you, all you do is just grab your uh, variable and drop it into subsets. Once you have variables, uh, once you have your subsets, um, you can then select a summary statistics. So the summary statistics, it uses data from your demographics. First of all, you can um, make sure that the subset that you are going to compare are actually comparable. So it, it is important to look whether your um, subsets are reasonably similar in, in, in terms of age, in terms of sex. In this case, we didn't really have, well, all the um, subjects were Asian, so we don't really have differences in race. And you also, in, in the summary statistics, you will also uh, get um, your selected variables. So here we are looking at the subset one good response and subset two no response uh, based on the DAS28 ESR. So what else you can do in summary statistics? You can um, drag and drop any of your variables and also visualize them. Uh, let's see how that the CRP compares. So the CRP uh, distribution is different. It's the same DAS28, but it's based on the C-reactive protein rather than 
erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and you can see that in subset one that we selected as a good responders, now you have 16 good and five moderate. And um, in subset two, in, in not all non-responders, there are two moderate responders. So that tells you that your definition of response actually will influence uh, what subjects are being analyzed, uh, what are you comparing, um, what kind of analysis you can run with the subjects. You may want to try different responses to see what kind of results you get. You can also drag and drop uh, a numerical value as well. Um, uh, for example, the baseline uh, CRP. Now you have uh, the um, response and non-response. And um, according to the t-test, it's not significant. Uh, but you can tell that there is um, some kind of a trend. So the responders seem to have a lower CRP than non-responders at the beginning of the clinical trial. This is uh, not a very huge number of patients, and the difference is not that significant. So it might be a trend. With uh, this advanced, uh, with this um, summary statistics, another thing that y you can also do, which is I find very useful, you can print this. Uh, you can click on the print button in the uh, top right corner, and you can get your summary statistics, and you can print the page, and then you can use it for your report, or you can use it for your presentation. Okay, any questions on summary statistics? I do okay. not see any so far. I'd like to come back to the comparison. So we have selected here good and no responders. And we have done the summary statistics. If we think that this is an interesting uh, subset, interesting cohorts that we want to compare later, come to, them, to this later, we can save this subset. So there is a save subset button on the right top corner. You can say a subset. You can give it description, and uh, we can uh, describe it uh, based on the um, variable we have selected. Uh, this is ESR, and uh, we have response and no response, and we can make this in the public, and then we can share it with other researchers in our organization, or we can leave it unchecked, and then it will only be, it can only be used by a person who has created it. So, and we can save the subset, and you can see this subset that has been saved, different ones. You can select subset to use, You can email it to yourself, or you can email it to someone. Okay. And you can also um, make it public, or you can um, make it private by clicking on this uh, look in the public um, column. So right now, it's private. And if you click it on it again, it will become, the log becomes open, and now it's public. You can also delete it. So once you select uh, the subset of the uh, cohorts, uh, you will get this warning. And this warning only indicates that it, this selection will override your previous selection. So you select it, and you have it back. You have your responders and non-responders. You run your summary statistics, and the next step would be to 
um, explore this in the grid view. Okay, my grid view can be slow sometimes. Okay, so in the grid view, you have your subsets, subset one and subset two, and you can sort your data. You can select columns. So if you don't really want to see the trial name, you can deselect it. If you are not interested in uh, looking at the race, you can deselect it, and so on. So um, here you have the patient IDs and the subject. And this is just uh, something that Transmart um, assigns to each patient when the data is loaded. Samples uh, would be populated if you were selecting um, a whole subset and a patient has samples associated with it. So we can do that now. We can go back to, to the comparison. And we can select the whole subset and run a summary statistic on the whole subset and then look at the grid view. Um, and the samples didn't appear. OK. So these samples here are actually the samples from the um, high dimensional data. You can drag and drop this high dimensional data, and you can visualize um, not the data itself, but uh, what patients actually have this data available. OK, the grid view can be exported. There is a button on the left, bottom left, export to Excel. When you click on this button, uh, this data is downloaded into Excel. And you can also visualize it. Ah, that's not that. OK. Here, this is the grid view. And you can see uh, the data that you have visualized in the grid view. And you can save them in your Excel and uh, attach it to your report. Any questions about uh, the grid view? Um, yes. Is it possible to view the sample names in the sample column in the grid view? Yeah, usually it does work. It might have had some kind of a um, bug. Samples um, usually. Visualized if you uh, have them associated with the patient. Okay, and this one is slow. Yeah. It must be a bug. Um, we'll have to look into it. OK, and we, also had, we had another question also yeah. about, is it possible to restyle the graphics? To change restyle any of the, the graphic? graphic? Yeah, I think change yeah. any of the graphic views. I don't think you can change the graphic views. Um, yeah. Not editable at this point. I know for the next version of Transmart, there's some better um, graphics and visualization that is coming. Right. Uh, this in this uh, version, um, that's what you see is what you get. But better graphic has been um, kind of 
on the list of things, on the list of the desirable things, and uh, I believe it's been uh, developed for the next uh, Transmart version. So uh, once you have selected the study, and you have um, looked at your cohort or looked at your whole study, and the next step uh, would be to analyze the data. And uh, there will be an advanced workflow training and more advanced. In this introductory training, we will look at the skill advanced workflows to just give you an idea how this works. So when you click on your advanced workflow, you will have this analysis drop-down menu here. And when you click on the drop-down menu, you will have a list of the different analysis that you can do with your data. So let's start with a simple one, box plot with ANOVA. So in the box plot with ANOVA, you will need one independent variable and one dependent variable. One of these variables has to be numeric. So since we were looking at the um, response We can continue with that, and we can select good response and no response patient. And then we can select some numerical values that we would want to investigate. We are wondering if the baseline CRP, C-reactive proteins, has any effect on the response. So we select the baseline CRP, we drop it into the independent variable, and we have our categories in the dependent variable, and we can run our analysis. Okay. And uh, in our analysis, you can see this is a good responders, and this is um, no responders. And you can look at the p-value, and it does not really look uh, particularly significant. So it doesn't look like the CRP correlates with, as baseline, correlates with the response. Uh, this is our response based on the erythrocyte sedimentation rate at 14 weeks. So I was wondering if um, there is a correlation between CRP at week 14 and uh, what is considered to be good and no response based on the ESR. So for that, we can select the week 14 CRP and still have our good and um, no response as dependent variables. And we can run our analysis again. And here you can see that the good responders, they obviously had, have a much lower CRP level than uh, the no responders. And we can look at uh, the p-value, and the p-value appears to be significant, so um, which is not really surprising because that's what you would expect. Uh, because even though we've noticed that there are differences between categories, how uh, the patients are categorized based on the CRP and ESR, but still they overlap a lot. So that what one would expect. And um, in case of the box plot, it does not really matter which variable is dependent and which one is independent. It uh, depends how you want your graph um, box plot to look. You can change um, your variables between these boxes, and then your data will be plotted differently. I think this is a, a better representation of the correlation of the CRP at week 14 and the uh, response based on ESR. Okay. Any questions about box plot? Okay, uh, 
So what's great about um, Transmart is that you can do your exploratory analysis and hypothesis uh, testing very quickly. So let's say you want to look at some other hypothesis maybe that you have about uh, the responders and non-responders. We want to see if the age uh, correlates with the response and non-response. And there were some studies that have indicated that younger patients have a better response. So here we can run this with age as our dependent variable. And in our case, there is no correlation. So you can see uh, that responders and non-responders, they are um, distributed about the same. And then your p-value is not significant. Okay, then you may have some other ideas and um, all you do is you clear the dependent variable and you select a different dependent variable. As a dependent variable, you can sele also select, um, or at, at a numerical variable, you can also select the high dimensional data. Uh, the high dimensional data, uh, so they ha we have data for 50,000 probes in there for 20,000 genes, so you cannot really plot all of that as a box plot. So in order to be able to plot it and visualize it, you have to select uh, specific genes that you want to um, investigate. So to do that, uh, there is this high dimensional data button. And once you select the high dimensional data button, you can select your gene. You, you just need to start typing. Let's say you are thinking that maybe TNF, expression of the TNF, uh, has something to do at the, with the response and non-response to anti-TNF therapy. Let's apply. So this is uh, our data for the gene expression at baseline before the treatment. And the treatment is anti-TNF in Fliximab. So, and we want to see whether the level of expression of the TNF had anything to do, whether or not it's a predictor of good and no response to the anti-TNF therapy. So we click run, and it runs pretty quickly. And in, in case of um, genes, you will get your output for every single probe that has been used for this gene in the array. For the TNF, there are quite a few probes. Uh, most of them have about the same uh, intensity, and there are two probes that have higher intensity than the others. But uh, the bottom line is that uh, there is no difference in TNF expression between good and no responders. And you can also look at your p-value. So this hypothesis did not really produce any actionable items or any actionable uh, results. But let's say we want to look at some other gene. Maybe we have a hypothesis. Let's try the CD207. The CD207 is a marker for dendritic cells, apply selection. So now we can um, examine the expression of this gene between these two groups to see if this can be our biomarker and predictor of response to anti-TNF therapy. Okay, and let's see. And you have uh, good responders and no responders. So the good responders appears to have a much lower expression uh, compared to no responders. And you only see two, uh, block, uh, two blocks here because there is only one probe for this gene. And your p-value appears to be significant. So now this is... Um, theory. Uh, so you had a theory, you have tested it, and now you can 
and run additional experiment and explore this finding further. You can also look up literature and see if anyone else has uh, reported any uh, CD207 being um, a biomarker of response to infliximab. And no one reported. I have looked it up before this training. Um, so, any questions so far on the box plot? Nope, I don't see any yet. Okay. Okay. So, um, the next analysis is correlation analysis. Okay. Uh, the correlation analysis requires two numeric concepts. So we can select two numeric concepts. Like uh, I'm wondering if the baseline and week 14 CRP correlates. So um, that the infliximab actually reduces the CRP regardless of whether or not it was high or low. Uh, at the baseline, let's see. Um, we run this analysis, and we can look at the correlation. So, um, at the baseline, this is the values that we had, and um, let me see. at the um, Week 14, this is the values that we had. So there appears to be a correlation. So the uh, p value will be in this right corner and the correlation coefficient in this corner. So the p value appears to be pretty significant. So what it tells us is that uh, if uh, a patient had a high CRP at the baseline, even though it might be get, it, it might be reduced with infliximab. It's still um, higher compared to other patients. So the correlation analysis uh, allows you to uh, select correlation type and different correlation types. They work um, better in different um, for different. Uh, variables, so you can just select the one that you believe will work better for your variables. But um, in this case, regardless of the um, method, you still got a pretty significant correlation between your CRP level at baseline and week 14. So this is just uh, a couple of a very simple but effective uh, analysis. Uh, for data in transport. Okay. Any any questions on on the correlation analysis? Uh, uh, no, no questions. Okay. So another data set um, that we can um, explore here is the um, ovarian carcinoma. This data set is also loaded. Oh, it's still loading. The data set is still uh, is also loaded on the um, public server. You can uh, take a look at it on your own after the training, if you would like. But I'm going to look at this data set on the uh, TR demo server. So ovarian cancer car carcinoma is a data set uh, that is available from uh, TCGA. It's a public um, repository of cancer data. And here you can also see the biomarker data, clinical data, sample and time points, subjects, medical history under subjects, and demographics. 
So this uh, at data type, this data set uh, has array CGH data associated with it. Array CGH data is an array that detects um, variation in copy number in cancer samples. So that's uh, very important in cancer studies. And you want to see whether or not any of the regions or genes are being uh, duplicated, lost, or maybe they are unaffected, and these variations in um, copy number uh, could be very important for uh, selecting the right therapy. So again, in the comparison, we can select the whole data set as, one, as our subset and uh, run a summary statistics. It's a big data set. It includes 573 patients. So it may take a couple of minutes. No, pretty fast. So you can also visualize it in the grid view. Okay. And um, in the summary statistics, you can also drop some of the other variables uh, to see um, what is the distribution, for example, of different uh, tumor stage or histopathological type. The type is just one. year of initial pathological diagnosis also gives you a distribution. So the study started in uh, 1995 and uh, uh, ran through 2007 and 2008 probably. So we can go back to the advanced workflow and for the um, this data set, we can uh, test one more analysis, uh, survival analysis. Okay, this is a cancer study. Survival analysis is um, very important. So under clinical data, you can find days, days to death. And for the survival analysis, we will select it as our time category. Uh, then we will need to select categories. So what uh, subjects we want to compare or which category do you want to look uh, at this? So we can um, look at the tumor stage, okay, cancer staging. So for the cancer staging, let's select uh, the stage 3B and the stage 3C. So this is um, kind of close in staging, but we're wondering if um, there is a difference in the survival. Sensoring variable would be a variable like if a patient is still alive and we are looking at the survival days. So this is days to death. So if um, the patient that are alive, they would be not included in this um, time anyway. But in many data sets, you will have um, survival day days. And if you have survival days, and it's not quite clear whether your patient is still living or deceased. So in that case, you can use sundering variable and exclude all patients that are still alive. So in this case, we don't have to do it. So now that we have selected days to death and we have selected the two categories, we can again click Run. And we have our result. You can see 
and that uh, the stage 3b uh, appears to have longer survival than the stage 3c patients even though that the difference between the stages is not uh, that big okay. so and um, for the survival analysis you also have number of different um, statistical output values that I'm sure you're going to um, analyze more in the advanced training. So the beauty of this um, analysis is that you can very quickly just change your category and test a number of different hypotheses within minutes. You don't have to load, reload your data. Um, you just select another category and you can um, analyze it again. Here we can also look, um, for example, at um, age. So, age. category. Age is numerical, so you can enable binning for that. So if you enable binning, you can split your age category into several different bins and then look for um, survival based on the age. You can uh, either evenly distribute your population or you can manually bin it. And then you'll have a choice of um, selecting age range for this. So in this case we can evenly distribute the population and we want to know whether or not the survival depends on the age of a patient. So we click run and we get our analysis. So uh, we get our results. So here you see that in the category 26 to 59 we have a longer survival than in the category between 59 and 89, which is also um, kind of expected. So any questions about survival analysis? No, I don't see any yet. Okay. For RACGH, uh, there are three specific uh, tests that are available in Transmart. You have frequency plot, you have group, uh, group test, and you also have survival analysis. But uh, this survival analysis is different from the one that we have and just um, explored. So for this survival analysis, first of all, you have to select your uh, high dimensional data. So copy number variation data. Uh, then again, you select your survival time. And in this case, it does require that you select the censoring variable. It won't run without the censoring variable. So we can um, select with tumor as our sensor variable. And then it also asks you about the alternation type. You can select gain versus no gain, loss versus no loss, uh, loss versus normal and gain. And uh, there are permutations. Uh, the at least thousand permutations are recommended to make this analysis meaningful, but it does run for a long time if you select that many permutations. So um, we'll select 10 and we will uh, click run the analysis. So as you can see, this date and this analysis runs for a long time. In order to run it and not tie up uh, the transmart, you can put it in background. So we can click this run drop in background button and now 
it's going to be in our analysis job here. See, it's running analysis. And we don't have to um, stop analyzing our data set. We will just wait when this analysis becomes available, and we can come back to it. But while it, it is being analyzed, we can do some other analysis. Okay. Any questions about um, ACGH survival analysis? We'll look at the results in just a minute. Uh, it doesn't look like it. And keep going. Okay. Uh, so while we are waiting for that analysis, we can do the frequency plot for ACGH. So the frequency plot for ACGH is similar to the group test for ACGH, but this is a quick and dirty kind of analysis. So if you uh, have a a group that you want to look at quickly to see if it makes sense to start your 10,000 permutation. You can select this analysis, you can drop your ovary um, data into the array CGH and then you select the groups uh, for the groups. We are looking at this two uh, stage Three C and page three B. Actually, I wanted to look at the different group. So let's look at the status. Okay, tumor free and with tumor. And then we can run the analysis. Um, this job you can also put in background, and this one doesn't take that long. Okay. So we can put it in the background, so we can go back. So this one is still running the analysis, this one is still dumping the high dimensional data. So we'll have to wait a little longer to get our results. So uh, one okay, so one result is here. So the frequency plot here for patient with tumor and for patient with tumor free showed the loss and gain in different regions um, of the genome. So this is chromosomes and here you have um, loss and gain. So with this analysis what you can do is you can visually kind of uh, look at it to see if there are any regions that seem to be interesting. It can look like this is chromosome 9, like there is very little aberration in patients that were tumor free um, at the end of the study. And uh, this is chromosome 9, and here you have some gains in this uh, region. So this may be something that you will want to investigate and then use a more detailed analysis that would be group test ACGH, and then you can uh, select your, it's also region and your group, but you can select your statistical test, you can select your alternation type, and then you select um, 10,000 permutation and run it for a day or so, and um, then you'll get a very detailed report for each chromosome, and you can see which regions are exactly differentiated between patients that uh, fared better in terms of tumor. Um, and uh, um, then you can test that findings using some other methods or experimentally. Okay. Oh, we can go 
back to analysis drop and uh, look at the survival analysis. So survival analysis has also been completed while we are waiting. So uh, the results here are, are is a table, but you can um, click on the table and click show survival plot. and you get a survival plot for your selected region. This one doesn't look particularly interesting. Okay. You can select something with a um, like good p-value. Um, There are many pages here, so it, um, sometimes it's challenging to go through them all. Maybe it can end. This one is not interesting either. Okay. So um, going one by one is not particularly efficient because there are a lot of regions and a lot of chromosomes. So in order to um, kind of visualize this data all together, you can download results. Click on the download result and uh, it will take a while, but it will download the table and all of the survival plots, and then you can further uh, filter in Excel and select uh, significant p-values and uh, select significant FDRs, depending on your criteria, and analyze your data further and use it for your reports and presentations. Any um, questions? Uh, I don't see anything, anything yet. Okay. So one more important feature of the Transmart is the data download. Okay. You select a data set and you drop it. Um, and then you can export your data. Here's the tab data export. So you click on the data export. What happens? My issue. We will test the data expert on a different. Um, different instance. We will select the small data set. And, uh, data export. So the data export, you get this window where you can select what data you want to export. For this data set, there's clinical and low-dimensional biomarker data and messenger RNA data. So you can select this, both of them, or just one of them. And then you select this button on the bottom, export data. 
And this also can be run on the background. Just keep, sometime it takes time. So you can put it in the background. Okay. And here, as you can see, this uh, tab export jobs, where your um, jobs are it can be visualized. So this is the one that we just started. And right now, it's in the gathering data. As soon as it collects data, it will be completed, and it will actually automatically be downloaded. So you don't really have to watch. And um, while it's um, downloading the data, you can continue working with Transmart. You can download more data. And here you have um, clinical and low dimensional and also messenger RNA microarray data. And uh, let's say in this case, you don't really want to load and uh, download them all. You want to filter your data. Okay. As I have mentioned, here the data is being downloaded, the job that you have started earlier. So let's go back to download of this data set. So if you are not interested in downloading all of the data, you just want to download baseline scores. You can drag and drop the baseline score into this field, and then select 86 patients, and you also export the data. And then you will export only the variable that you have selected. As uh, important is if you have huge data set like this uh, ovarian cancer, it may take a very long time to download all of the data, and you might be only interested in looking at that set of the data. Um, we do have a question. Uh, Andrew, yeah. Andrew is asking, can you make parts of a study only available to certain users? Uh, for example, outcome data hidden for blinding purposes? Well, um, in administrative um, tab here, there is an access control. So the control is by um, study. So if you are making study uh, available, it's available to the people that you make it available to. With the parts of the study, um, there were discussions of making parts of the studies available, but I'm not sure this feature has been um, implemented yet. So if you have a study like that, uh, you can um, load it as um, one study where you have all of the data and it's available only to selected uh, group of users, and then you can load it part of that study as a different study and make it available to another group of um, users. So, but I think yeah, this is one of the. Yep. Okay, I think that helps. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, so, any other questions? That's all that I see. Okay, so it's um hour and twenty minutes right now. We can um, take one more data set and do a little bit more analysis, or uh, we can um, wrap up here. I think we should. I think we can wrap up now, Natalia. I think that's a very good overview. Okay, and I, I don't really want to go through all of the advanced workflows because then people are going to be bored at the advanced workflows training. And yeah. if you would like them to attend and spend more time on the advanced workflows. Okay. So, any any other closing? Are those all close up? No, that's good. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank Natalia for an uh, excellent presentation. Um, 
I would like to point out that this is, um, if you go to our uh, foundation um, webpage, if you look under uh, researchers in the training, uh, the full training schedule is posted here um, with uh, a lot more detail about what all the different courses are. As I mentioned, we have uh, for beginners, overview of 1.2, loading data, uh, some advanced workflow analysis, um, the uh, the RESTful API um, for doing more uh, with R, for example. And so there, there's a number of new classes this year, and so you can come to this page and register. Um, also, uh, I will be making available the, um, the, the classes, uh, the, the, uh, the recording of this. And so if you come back here uh, in a couple of hours, you'll see the recording of this class as well. So uh, thank you, everyone, um, for attending. And uh, please, there will be a survey that you'll get uh, if you just take a few minutes and fill it out and tell us what you think and what we can do better. Um, and uh, again, thanks you all. And um, hopefully we'll see you at another one of our classes. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.